community, those who are in uh, the building, and those who are without. Please stand if you are able to sing our congregational praise song, Take Me Back. Take me back, take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Take me back, take me back, dear Lord, where I first believed. Sing that again, please. Take me back, take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Take me back, take me back, dear Lord, where I first believed. I feel that I'm so far from you, Lord, but still I hear you calling me. Those simple things that I once knew their memories are drawing me. I must confess, Lord, I've been blessed. But my soul is not satisfied. Renew my faith, restore my joy. Dry my weeping eyes. Take me back. Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Take me back, take me back, dear Lord, to where I first believed. I tried so hard to make it all alone. I need your help just to make it home. One more time. Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, where I first believed. may be seated. Good morning and welcome to University Baptist Church. We're glad you're all here. Oh, look at the faces. This is wonderful. We are just happy for all those who are here this morning, those who are listening on the different sources that we have today, we're just glad. I uh, have a group that I go to on Sunday morning sometime, and the title of the group is Sunday Morning Joy. What a word, joy. I hope you're feeling joyful this morning. You got up, first thing you woke up, let's start there. And you had an opportunity to look around, to see the sun, know that God is still working in your life, to know that you're breathing, you're able to get yourself together because you knew you was going someplace or you're going to get up and you're going to turn on that stuff y'all turn on to look at stuff. And you're going to sit back and you're going to laugh. You're going to step back and say, thank you, God, for another day. And you're going to be just overwhelmed with joy, even if everything else is going bad. Because I know with a relationship with a loving, caring God, there's a rainbow coming. It may not be today. It may be down the road. But there is joy. 
So I would like for you to think about this day. I know you might have came here thinking about, man, that gas is awful high. I don't know if I'm going to make it. Or you may think about, you know, the day is Sunday, but man, Monday is that far away. But right now, this moment, this hour, it is Sunday morning joy. And we're just thankful that you're here. We're thankful for those who are listening. Know that, man, God is alive and working in our lives in the midst of whatever is going on. Welcome to University Baptist Church. to sing call as partners in Christ's service is in your purple insert call as partners in Christ's service <laughs> And now let us enter into this time of prayer where our hearts can be still, our fears can be managed, and we can go to God in prayer. We remember those in our congregation who are struggling with illness and with other forms of suffering. We lift them up in our prayer as well as those who have joys to share. We thank God for this journey called life, and we have so much to pray for, but I'll keep it short. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, we thank you. We really do thank you for life, for community, for love. We thank you that you have told us to come boldly before your throne of grace, and you will meet us there. 
we pray and thank you for the opportunity to see loved ones here in this building as well as around in our communities. We're being careful, oh God, but we are so thankful that we can touch and feel and smell and be in the presence of each other. These two years have been awfully stressful and we thank you, Lord, for your grace at this time. We pray, we do pray for those who cannot be with their loved ones, who cannot touch and feel and know each other, Lord, because they have died from this grave illness or they are struggling across the world. We do lift up our brothers and sisters in the Ukraine. Lord, the images are shattering. We pray that you will guide us in what to do and guide our leaders, O oh Lord, in making peace. We pray for all across the world there are wars, rumors of wars, strife. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan, on the continent of Africa, in the Caribbean, in our own country that are struggling with hate separation, anxiety, and fear. Lord, plant your seed of wisdom, courage, light, to light all the paths that are dark in our world. And now, Lord, we come saying this prayer that Jesus taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Great is the Lord, and God is worthy to be praised. Please stand if you're with us. Great is the Lord, two times. Great is the Lord, God is holy and just. By God's power we trust in his love. Great is the Lord, God is faithful and true, by God's mercy God proves God is love. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory, great is the Lord and worthy of praise. Great is the Lord, now lift up your voice, now lift up your voice. By God's power we trust in God's love. Great is the Lord, God is faithful and true. By God's mercy God proves God is love. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory. Great is the Lord and worthy of praise. Great is the Lord, now lift up your voice, now lift up your voice. Great We come to our time of offering this morning. There are offering plates on the communion table and one in the very back, whichever is easiest for you. Before we collect that offering, uh, I want to call attention to a couple of things uh, for prayer and for uh, response. Uh, the teenagers are, uh, the youth group is back in uh, meeting today. We're grateful to announce that. So after worship, they will 
have lunch and then they're going to go on a recreational activity and uh, we look forward to them getting back together. Uh, they will meet once a month now for a while, so if you have a teenager at home, we hope you will encourage them to be involved once again. Also, we are announcing that we have a new transition team that's going to guide our church in the uh, last year of my ministry here. They will help find an interim pastor. Uh, they will, that's not a permanent pastor, that's a temporary pastor. They will also make some other arrangements that need to be made in this time of transition. So their names are in the bulletin. I hope you'll begin praying for them as they do this work. It's not easy work, but I have full confidence they're going to do a great job. We are continuing with our online Bible study, reading the Bible while black, I think is the name of it, something like that. Uh, uh, and uh, Raymond and Cheryl are leading that. And you're welcome to join that. They're about two weeks into it. But if you email the church and say you want to receive the link, you can watch online as well. We also have an in-person Bible study at 7.30, 7.30 on Wednesday. And it's a wonderful group of people, and you're invited to come. Maybe you need a night out. Take yourself out and uh, come to over here on Wednesday night, and we'll have that Bible study together. Uh, the young adult Bible study continues on Thursday night at 6 o'clock. That is an online Bible study. Uh, there are other announcements that I hope you'll read and pay attention to and be a part of if uh, you possibly can. We are still collecting a offering to help with the issues in Ukraine. If you want to donate to that, just take any envelope and write the word Ukraine on it, and all the money that comes in through that will be given uh, to help with uh, refugees and other crises that are going on in that nation. Uh, I would also like to say uh, that we have a national ministries offering that we collect every year. Uh, we're going to wait just about another week before we go into that full force uh, because uh, we're, we, can't, we cannot uh, focus on two offerings at once. So uh, we'll get to that and we'll do a good job with that. If you want to go ahead and donate to National Ministries, there's an envelope in your box of envelopes. You can go ahead and do that. And there are envelopes in the pew racks, but we'll give a higher priority to that in, the, in about two weeks. Let's go to the Lord in prayer for all these things today. Oh God, we are grateful that you call us to wonderful work, that we are called to work on ourselves, to grow in faith and joy and love, and that we are called to do good things in the world. Help us as we try to respond to these callings and challenges. We want to do well, but there's a part of us that gets lazy and gets frightened, and we need your strength for that. And money is one of those things that tends to take us in the wrong direction sometimes, Lord. And so we come today to give you this offering because it helps us to think more rightly about the value of money, and we also stand in wonder of all you do with what we contribute. So we pray that you'll take this offering, spread it around the world where it's needed most, alleviate suffering, and bring your good news of love to the world, we pray. In Christ's name we ask these things. Amen.
Would you please be seated for the reading of the gospel? We are looking this morning at Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. We're in a study about things that lead to peace, peace within ourselves, peace with others, and peace with God. And we've looked at about six different kinds of things, and today we're looking at one called a worthy challenge that we believe that you need a worthy challenge in life to keep you from kind of uh, becoming bored and depressed and lazy and all of that kind of thing. And uh, I think we're going to find it in this passage today among other places in Scripture. So let's look together in Luke chapter 10. We'll read down through the 12th verse and then we'll skip down to the 17th verse. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into the streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, on that day, it will be more tolerable for Sodom than for that town. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you. But rejoice that your names are written in heaven. May God add God's blessings to the reading, the hearing, and the doing of God's word. Amen. Love. 
Lord, unveil my eyes and let me see you face to face the knowledge of your love as you leave in me. Lord, renew my mind as your will unfolds in my life and living every day by the power of your love. Hold me close, let your love surround me. Bring me near, draw me to your side. And as I wait, I'll rise up like the eagle, and I will soar with you. Your spirit lifts me on in the power of your love. Hold me close, let your love surround. to your side and as I wait I'll rise up like the eagle and I will show with you your spirit leads me on in the power of your love and I will show with you your spirit leads me on in the power of your love and I will show with you your spirit leads me on in the power of your Thank you very much. I appreciate that contribution to worship. And thank you for coming to worship. It's good to see you all. Uh, I was getting a little lonesome in here, and my voice was echoing off the walls and the empty pews, and it was scaring me. Uh, and it's really nice to see uh, all of you here. And uh, also great to welcome those who are worshiping online. We are very pleased and appreciative that you have come to join us today. <clears throat> In a classic episode of the long-running animated series, The Simpsons, we find the superstar of that series, Homer, uh, in the depths of depression. Homer has finally come to have to admit that as everybody has told him throughout his life, he's not very bright. And this realization that his intellect is a little dim, has thrown him into a deep depression. And as always, his loving wife, Marge, tries to help. And she comes to him and says, Homie, there's a lot of ways to get smarter. You could take an adult education course, for instance. And Homer, in his typical misunderstanding of reality, <laughs> replies, Oh, Marge, Education never makes you smarter. Every time you learn some new stuff, it pushes old stuff out of your brain. He says, you remember when I took that home wine-making course and I forgot how to drive? <laughs> it's Homer's version of, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. But Dr. Daniel Levinson, a neurologist, who a best-selling author says, that's just not true. We can all continually learn all through life. And in fact, he says, it's extremely important that we do. That if we don't challenge ourselves with new things throughout life, Levinton says, the brain grows weak. But if we will take challenges 
then the brain actually gets stronger as we age. Can you imagine that? He says, for instance, if you like walking, take the walk, but every once in a while, get out on a pathway that's got a few roots or rocks or obstacles, so you have to keep alert and keep vigilant. It helps your brain. Don't just walk the same old path day after day. He said, there's other things you can do. He said, it's all right and helpful to do crossword puzzles. Any of you ever do that? They tell you we're supposed to do that. And, and Sudoku or Duco or whatever it is, I've never been able to successfully work even one of those puzzles, but I understand they can be worked, right? Or he says uh, to watch game shows on TV. All that's okay. Uh, but he says you got to get a little, bit, a little bit more risky than that. He said learn a new language. Try that. That would be good. Or learn a new skill like carpentry or gardening. That would be good. Or take in a foster child. That's a little frightening. Or uh, provide care for your grandchildren. Some of you are heeding that call right now. Or uh, do a lot of other things. Get involved with a community organization that's doing good. Take on a challenge, he says. For when you take on a worthy challenge, the brain gets stronger, more efficient, more active, better. But when we avoid those, then the brain gets weaker, lazier. Now, Levitin admits that even though the taking on challenges are good for us, he says we have a strong tendency in most of us to kind of gravitate toward the convenient, the safe, the familiar. Can we get an amen to that? He says the pandemic didn't help. We thought it did. At first it did because it challenged us. We had to figure out how are we going to live with all these restrictions and, and fears and so forth. But he said, then we learned a very bad thing. <laughs> he said, we learned that if we have a cell phone and a computer screen, we never have to leave our couch ever again. He said, we used to have to go to the grocery store. Remember that? And you walked down the aisles and you had to pick out the items and you had to deal with other shoppers and you had to deal with the lines and you had to deal with the clerk and you had to figure out prices and, and all the coupons or whatever it was. And that made your brain move. But now we figured out, I can order all that online. They'll drop it off on the porch. You've seen it. If you still go to the grocery store, half the aisles are filled up with people who are packing bags for those who are having it delivered. He says that we used to have to go to the mall or the shopping center to get a gift for Aunt Sue or to pick out a nice frock for Easter, and we had to park, remember that? Parking in the parking lot, <laughs> navigating the mall, and dealing with other customers, and going into some place and looking at display cases or picking up clothing and trying them on, going into those horrible, uh, where you try on stuff, I don't know what those things are called, uh, and, and you did all of that, and then you had to deal with the clerk, and you had to get it right, and you had to get back in the car, and all that was a challenge. Now, we go to Amazon.com, and they'll bring it right to you. Used to have to drive to work, drive to church, drive to the doctor, drive to school, but we figured out now we can go to all those places while we're sitting on the sofa drinking a cup of coffee. Homer Simpson might be delighted with this, <laughs> but it has an adverse effect on most of us. We need a worthy challenge to keep life interesting, to not fall into boredom and depression, to not weaken our brains. And thanks be to God, if you're a Christian, you have a worthy challenge. Uh, Jesus was really clear about that. He said, I'm not calling you to comfort, right? Uh, I'm calling you to pick up your cross and follow me. I'm calling you to die to yourself. He said, you've got to count the cost before you get in with me because this is going to be a challenging life if you follow me. And part of that challenge is the inner life, building the inner life. It's not an easy thing to do to grow in love and peace and patience and self-control, and trust, and joy. You probably have a few of those that you're pretty good at, and you probably have a few that you're not great at. But to build that up takes work. Like anything else, it takes practice and discipline and time to grow stronger on the inside. That's a challenge for most of us. Maurice Nicole is a Scottish, or was a Scottish, 
a neurologist, psychiatrist, and deeply devoted follower of Jesus Christ. And he spent his whole life trying to figure out how do we enhance the presence of God in our life? How do we become more spiritually mature? How do we grow more faithful, more loving, more patient? How does all that happen? It, he knew it happened by the Holy Spirit, but what is the practice? What is the process for that? And he came to the conclusion that, that we're not a unified whole as an individual, that we are a multiplicity of different things. And that in every situation, a bunch of different voices come at us from inside. And we think they might be me, but they're not me. We have a higher, higher person, he says, that can make some choices. We just don't know it at first. But our emotions come up, our intellect come up, and we hear all these different kind of ideas and thoughts, and we have to figure out how to manage that. Now, we've talked about that before here. Uh, you know, I, I've said, do you talk to yourself? How many of you ever talk to yourself? Most of you are talking to yourself right now, okay? It, it goes on, right? So if you're talking to yourself, who's doing the talking and who's doing the listening? You, you ever get an earworm song, you know, a song jumps into your head and it won't get out of your head and you're walking around and you're, you're thinking, oh my goodness, you are my sunshine. If I hear that one more time in my brain, I'm going to lose it. And, and you, you, well, who's the DJ dropping the needle on that song in your brain and who's the listener who's annoyed to hear it? It's all these different things going on in us. The last week I told you that a man stole almost $6,000 from our benevolent fund. Now, I had a lot of thoughts about how to respond to that. They came upon me. I thought, well, I could go file a police report, get this dude arrested. I could send out an email to every church in the area saying, when this guy calls, don't mess with him. Uh, I could have prayed for him. That was another thing. You know, I thought about that. Uh, uh, and all those options got wider when, you're not going to believe this, on Monday of this week, that very same man called to ask if we'd give him another check to help with his rent. <laughs> he needs a, a spreadsheet or something. I, you know, he's, not, he's calling the same places. Now, when that happened, I realized, oh, we got some other options here. Uh, uh, we could uh, do a sting operation, you know. <laughs> Say, yeah, come on in and get that check, and then we'd have a SWAT team in the bushes, and when he walked in, they'd fall from the ceiling like ninja warriors, and they'd capture him. Or we could put a wire on Ingrid, and she could kind of just kind of casually talk to him, you stolen any money from any churches lately? And then he might say yes, and there we'd have him. Or while she's talking to him, I could come in from behind and hit him on the back of the head with a two-by-four and take zip ties and zip up his hands and haul him off to the police. Or I could brew some tea and have him sit down, and we could talk, and I could try to figure out what is it that's making you do these bad things. I could share the gospel with him and tell him he needs to repent and believe in Jesus Christ and, and accept the salvation uh, of the Lord. Uh, uh, or I could put a sedative in his tea, and then when he went out, I could take him down to the police. Or, you see, this could go on a while. And every bit of that is me. Every bit of it is a me, <laughs> a part of me. And somebody's got to make the decision of what to do, right? Somebody's got to make the higher choice. And Maurice Nicole says, that is the spirit of God and the image of God, but you have to build that up so it has the strength to make the right choice and not the wrong choice, especially when emotions are involved because our emotions travel so much faster than our intellect. And it well up in us, and then we do dumb things, right? Can we get an amen to that? Uh, and so he says, you got to build that inner life, that inner strength, so when all these voices come up and all these choices, and he says they're more than thoughts because they're invested with energy and emotion, and, and they even have value. We think, oh, that's a godly thought or that's a devilish thought. They have all these things. We, we have to have power in us and inner strengthening to do the right thing to choose the right thing. And that's challenging. That takes a long, long time to develop that kind of strength. 
That's a big challenge. But there's a great payoff. Maurice Nicole says, if you can get rid of some of those negative emotions and, and negative feelings that plague you and quit doing so many dumb things and, and unthinking things, oh, there's a liberation to that that makes your life filled with joy. But we're not just called to the inner journey. That's what Jesus is also saying here. We're also called to go out into the world and to do good things, uh, to make the world a better place, to go into the unknown and the uncertain with some courage. And that, too, is a worthy challenge. Jesus talks about it. He describes it in this passage. And I'll tell you very honestly, what he is describing in here is a nightmare to me. It's a nightmare what he's telling these people to do. It makes my knees knock, you know what I mean? It's like the worst possible scenario for my personality. See, where Jesus was is he had done a pretty good job up in Galilee, the northern part of Israel, in spreading the gospel. He and the disciples had gone village to village, and he had said, the reign of God has come into your town. It is now your chance to repent of following any other loyalty that you have placed higher than God. Come and bend your knee, repent of all your behaviors, change your ways, receive the Holy Spirit, and live as a loyal subject in the sovereignty of God. Enter the reign of God today uh, and, and your life's going to be improved. That's what Jesus did all over Galilee and he covered all that area but he realized he was running out of time. There's an interior clock running in Jesus always. He knows I'm running out of time. He knew when he was going to die. He knew when he went up to Jerusalem what was going to happen. And he's thinking, there's no way I by myself or with these 12 guys that never get anything right. There's no way we're going to cover all of Judea and Transjordan. We're not going to be able get, to get the message out. And so he recruits 70 followers. And he pairs them up into 35 teams. And he says, you got to get out there and spread this word. And then I'll come in and uh, finish the job. But I want you to get out there and get people knowing about this. I don't have time to get everywhere. And so he told them, now, this is not going to be easy, what I'm asking you to do. I'm sending you out as lambs before wolves. There's going to be people that hate what you say. There's going to be people that reject what you say. And no, there's going to be people who think, I don't want to quit serving myself. I don't want to quit being the boss of everything. I, I don't want to kneel before God and, and express my loyalty to God. I want to be loyal to something else, and they're going to hate you. There's going to be governments that don't want anybody having loyalty to anything above them, and they're going to come down on you. You're going to be attacked. Some of you may even be killed. This is going to be a very difficult challenge, but it's it's got to be done. So Jesus said, I want you to go out and I don't want you to take, don't even take time to pack. Does that give anybody a little unnerving? Don't, don't pack anything. Nah. Leave, here you go. You want to feel, leave your cell phone at home. Did you break out in a sweat, any of you right there? Don't pack a purse. No money. No money. No credit card. No Venmo. Nothing. Leave that. Don't even take an extra pair of sandals. you got to travel fast. You can't be bound down. And he says, when you get out there on the road going to these villages in Galilee and the Transjordan and you meet somebody, don't stop to greet them. Now, he didn't mean you couldn't tip your hat or say, hey, buddy. Uh, but there were these customs in the time that when you met somebody on the road, you had to carry on a conversation. I'm learning uh, that when I invite a repair person to our home in West Virginia, I have to add a little bit of time to that exercise. It's not like here where they come in and they're on the watch and they're clicking, what do you want me to do? Let me get in. I'm out of here. No, 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 no. They're going to talk to you somewhere. They're going to talk to you on the porch or on the deck or in the yard. They're going to talk to you. They're going to tell you a good bit of their life story. Two weeks ago, a man came to uh, do the seasonal upkeep on the furnace. Yeah, he rang the doorbell. I never met him. He walked in. He walked in the kitchen and took a chair. He sat down. Now, my furnace is not in the kitchen. He sat down, and he started jabbering about this and that and this and that and West Virginia. And, I, and so I said, oh, I, you know, I thought, well, i got to say something here. i got to seem like I'm at least paying attention. So I said, well, have you lived in West Virginia all your life? And the man, <laughs> and the man said, well, not yet. 
I said, okay. And then he started talking about where he lived and his farm implements. And he mentioned his wife. And I said, well, when did you marry your wife? He goes, oh, I, I did not marry my wife. No, sir, I did not. I said, oh, so you're not married. Oh, he said, as I, when I left the house this morning, I was. Do you know something I don't know? I said, no, no. I thought you said you didn't marry your wife. I didn't marry my wife. He said, it'd be foolish to marry your wife, wouldn't it? He said, I married my fiance, and she became my wife, but I don't know why anybody would marry their wife. That's a ridiculous question. That kind of high intellectual banter went on for like 20 minutes, uh, and then he got up and did his job. Now, I've learned that if I cut that short, I'm seen as rude. I'm seen as unfriendly. I'm seen as a big city stuck up guy. So I have to sit down and talk. And that was the custom in Israel. And Jesus knew if you sit down and talk with everybody that's going to want to talk with you on the road, you're never going to get to the mission accomplished. And we're running out of time. So he said, just wave at them and keep on moving. And when you get to the village, go to a house that looks right to you, knock on the door and say, peace upon you. And if they return that peace, that means they're a believer in God. That means they have some notion of the divine and the spiritual. And go in there and stay with them. And don't go moving around. Just stay right in that house. And whatever they serve you to eat or drink, you just eat it. I don't care if it's broccoli or Brussels sprouts or what he really meant. I don't care if it's a pork beef sandwich. Uh, you don't have to eat kosher in there. You eat what they serve you. And don't, uh, don't pay them anything. Their hospitality to you is the service they give to the kingdom of God. And what you're doing is even tougher. And so, uh, you know, that's your payment for doing the Lord's work. Then get all that straight. Okay. And then in the morning, after you get settled in there, go on into the village and tell everybody the message of the kingdom of God, that the reign of God has come near to you. This is your chance to repent of other allegiances, to bow your knee to the living God, to receive the spirit of God, and to live in the reign and sovereignty of God, come into the kingdom of God. This is good news. And, and, and Jesus says, you've got power now that you can heal, uh, you can deal with uh, the evil, uh, you can cure people. You've got all sorts of stuff going on there. And do that as a sign to them all that you truly do represent the realm and sovereignty of the living God. And so that's what they were to do. And he said, now, if you get in a city that does not welcome you or rejects you entirely, I want you to go out into the middle of Main Street and shake the dust off of your feet so everybody can see you do it. And I want you to let them know, because you have rejected the sovereignty of God, because you want nothing to do with the realm and reign of God, judgment's coming, buddy. I don't know when and I don't know how, but judgment is coming down. Now, the difference between these 70 and the apostles was that these 70s were called to a temporary mission. It's more like a mission trip. You ever been on a mission trip? They're just going out for a while, and then they get to go home. The apostles had to serve the rest of their life, right? So they get to go home after they do this. And in verse 17, we read about what happens when they do come home. They come home, and they return with joy. Ha <laughs> ha! They've met the worthy challenge. They've done what God asked of them, and they are exuberant. They said, this went much better than we thought, Jesus. This went much better. We even made the demons run. And Jesus gets caught up in the revelry, and he says, yeah, I know. When I was praying for you, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. You folks are empowered. And then he does a metaphor. He says, he says you know, you could walk on snakes and scorpions and they wouldn't hurt you that's a little bit of jewish humor he did not really mean to go out there and stomp on the snakes you might want to try that i don't know but he thought it was a little funny you guys could do anything you could wrestle a alligator nothing's going to harm you you guys have got touched into the power of god you've met the worthy challenge but don't get all conceited about what you've done the bigger thing is that you are a part of the reign of god your name is written in the kingdom of God. That's what, we, that's what we rejoice. They went out. They did the challenge. Now, there are really not two different challenges, the inner life and the outer 
walk because we have to have the inner life to have the courage and power and strength to do the good deeds in society. They're really connected. They're both the same challenge, but that is the worthy challenge put before every one of us. Now, I don't think, I hope that God doesn't want me to go run around in foreign villages and stay in people's homes and eat the stuff that they eat and not have any money and not, I, you know, I don't think I'm up to that. Maybe, you know, if that's what God tells me to do, Godson and I will be a team, won't we, Godson? Godson's going, nope, that ain't happening. <laughs> uh, uh, so that, that's frightening kinds of stuff. Uh, but we're not all called to go preach on a downtown corner or to do um, mission work in foreign nations. But what we are called to do is to give witness to the reign of God in our world and our life. We're to show by the way we live that we serve God as our ultimate loyalty that we don't have ourselves as the big boss, but that we love God and we receive God's spirit and we're trying to live in obedience to the one that loves us more than we can possibly understand. That's still a challenge, isn't it? However that looks, it's still a challenge, but it's a worthy challenge. It'll make your brain grow. It'll bring joy to your life. A couple of weeks ago, Kansas State University's men basketball team lost in the first round of the Big 12 tournament. And afterwards, there was a press conference for their coach, Bruce Weber. And Bruce Weber could have said a lot of things. These boys don't ever listen to me or, you know, but instead he said, I want to take time to tell you something about my faith. He said, uh, I've been coaching this team for many years. We've won championships twice. We've been to upper levels of the NCAA tournament. But he said, uh, last summer, I got appointed to the NCAA Ethics Committee. And I've learned that there are 16 major college programs that are under investigation by the FBI. And when they told me about this last summer, I said, you know, I'm going to grow my hair until one of those teams receives some penalty for their actions. And he said, look how shaggy my hair is. Not a single team has received any kind of punishment. He said, in fact, 15 of them are going to the NCAA tournament next week, the elite group of colleges. He said, my faith tells me I can't cheat, and these programs are cheating. He said, my faith and my God tells me I cannot commit recruiting violations. I can't pay players money to get them to come and play for me. Uh, I, I can't uh, uh, fix grades so they stay eligible. And, and that my major purpose as a coach in an NCAA university is to graduate student athletes. It's about the education. But he says very, very few programs follow this anymore and nobody makes them pay. And I quit because I can't compete by running a clean program. And I don't know if I'll ever be able to coach again. Now, did you read about that? I wonder who squelches all of that. That press conference was not even put anywhere. And he wept as he told this. He literally wept. But he won't weep all day, will he? Did you hear the gospel here? He won't weep forever because he's going to realize, man, I just sent evil running out of here. Wow, I stood up for God in my little part of the world and I said what God wanted me to say. I expressed my faith and Jesus is going to say, oh, Bruce, I saw Satan falling from the sky like lightning. You did the right thing. You did the right thing. You can do the right thing. There's challenges in your life right now to grow in faith, love, patience, joy. And from that power that God puts in you to do the right thing, to do the good thing, where you work, where you live, wherever you go. And when we do, we will feel joy, great joy. If I'd like you to open your bulletins or if you're worshiping online to take those mail outs and let's read together the confession and assurance of pardon. It's in the dark print on the right hand side of your worship folder. 
<clears throat> Let's read it together. Make our lives worth living, O oh God. Challenge us with the magnitude of your miraculous calling upon our lives. Amen. We're going to sing a children's song as our final hymn today. Uh, it's called uh, The Joy of the Lord. You probably haven't sung this in a couple of semesters. Find it on the purple sheet. Let's stand together and sing of the joy that comes to us when we accept the challenges of the Lord. strength the joy of the lord is my strength the joy of the lord is my strength the joy of the lord is my strength if you want joy you must pray for it if you want joy you must pray for it if you want joy you must pray for it the joy of the Lord is my strength. He giveth liveth water, and I thirst no more. God giveth living water, and I thirst no more. God giveth living water, and I thirst no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. God heals the brokenhearted, and they cry no more. God heals the brokenhearted, and they cry no more. God heals the brokenhearted, and they cry no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Before Kenny comes to give the benediction, I want to let you know that we will be baptizing on Palm Sunday. That's April the 10th. And if you are interested in being baptized or learning more about being baptized, I hope you will see me or email me. We're going to do a class next Sunday uh, for teens and adults, and then uh, we'll be talking to the children on the first Sunday in April. Uh, but there may be some of you that would like to be baptized, and uh, we would be happy to teach you about that and to make that a possibility in your life. So just see me if you are interested or know uh, someone in your family is. Kenny, come and give us our benediction. Lord, lift us up from the ashes of all our disappointments and sorrows. Help us rise into the light of your everlasting goodness and love. Amen.